Well, how do you do, Blu-ray and DVD movie fans? This is your your uh, home physical media viewer, Mike McGee, and I came and I am going to review for you this new artistic native 3D video that was shot in Germany in 2011 called Pina. And uh, by the time uh, this thing gets finished, my computer should be back from being dusted. I don't got my computer at the moment. And uh, we'll open it up first before we discuss it. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. And uh, now this is the back. And then um, let's open it up. And it comes within here. Here's, a, here's the main cover. And it comes with Blu-ray and um, two Blu-rays, 3D flat and a DVD flat. Here's the main front covers. And we'll open it up. And uh, you see the three... You see the uh, 3D, you see the 3D on the right and the DVD on the middle and the uh, flat Blu-ray on the left. And it contains also pictures. It doesn't have a reversible cover. So if you take this out, It has some pictures of the scenes of the picture, of the movie. And then if you close it, it has another scene for the movie. And uh, it also contains cards from the movie. I'll show you one or two of them. This is one of them. And here's another one. Now we're going to have a discussion. Excuse me. Now we're going to have a discussion about this movie. On Blu-ray, DVD, 3D. This is a very unusual movie shot in native 3D. It focuses on a very famous German uh, dancer and choreographer uh, named Pina Bosch. Originally, uh, she and Wim Wenders, a 3D enthusiastic filmmaker, was planning to shoot this kind of autobiography about her. But all of a sudden, she died. So Wim Wenders just gave up on the film. But then the dance troupe decided that why don't we continue to make the film as a, uh, as a dedication to her. A troupe, of de uh, a troupe of men and women showcase certain segments of her work at the Wuppertal Theater of Dance. It starts with a woman on the Whirlpool Troll stage that shows up wearing a funny looking bathing suit and wearing an accordion and uh, talks about the seasons. And all of a sudden, all the dancers come out in such a 3D look to introduce themselves. And then right afterwards, you got some uh, th uh, dancers portraying 3D stagehands. And they're putting all this sand on the stage like it's a beach. And before you know it, it starts off with these men, these women dancing with slinky underwear to, to I think, the public domain, the rites of spring. And, uh, and it focuses on this... Uh, uh, orange colored slinky uh, uh, um, slip and um, and then before you know it 
these men start coming out in their loungies, half naked, top half naked, and uh, they start dancing around with a woman, and it seems like it starts focusing in which e women group together in which they try to give one man, I think his name is Andre, a blonde man, the um, orange uh, colored uh, slip, and he rejects each woman, and then finally he takes one, he accepts one woman and gives it to him, and then afterwards, um, and afterwards they start dancing around. Now, looking at this film, I suspect that P, uh, Wim Wenders added a little sexiness to this film, to the dance. Each member of the troupe, through narration, introduces themselves through voiceover how much Pina has helped them in their introduction to dance and helped them as professional dancers. For example, you have one of the uh, troop performers, a blonde woman, who performs her dance movement in traffic outdoors under a traffic signal and a subway car above her. One of um, uh, Pina's favorite dance numbers is Cafe Mueller, which is based on a real cafe that she and the troops would come in for coffee and a sandwich and go over their daily work. And uh, in this case, it focuses on sleepwalkers, uh, sleepwalking, uh, sleepwalking uh, women. And, uh, and even sleepwalking men. And uh, you've got this, sometimes you have this scene in which this man, this sleepwalking men and women, man and woman is hugging each other. Another man goes behind him and, li and gets him to lift up the woman and she throws him down a couple of times. And before you know it, they do it automatically. And, um, and uh, there's a scene in which the two dancers are talking to each other in an outdoor sequence in a miniature version of the set where they actually insert the dancers and they're observing the memories of how Pina uh, showed them the directions in, in the Cafe uh, Mueller sequence. You also have one scene in which one of the older dancers whom some voiceover claimed that he also died, and that's kind of confusing because he was on the film, uh, in a park scene and he's tap dancing in the most ballet way while a dog barks around him and, and then he runs up to this tree and he starts scatting and he tap dances and it ends uh, like a Looney Tune cartoon. Now, there's another scene, which I suspect is gay, that involves that Russian uh, dancer named Andre and a Spanish guy. And it, he moves around in a glass house, and uh, looks like a glass house, and uh, to this Spanish uh, song. And all of a sudden, he moves around, and he, st he, starts, to he starts to holler for the blonde uh, a ballet dancer, Andre, and then all of a sudden he throws himself at Andre, and Andre picks him up, and he throws him down, and he moves him around, and then all of a sudden they show Andre leaving, and he's hollering, Andre, and he runs up and throws him up and carries him to nowhere. Now, was this a gay suggestion? Or was this the old-fashioned affection that nobody practices anymore in the United States? There's another interesting uh, dance number which is supposed to take place in a public dance, which you have this row of men and women sitting in the backstage, and all of a sudden, the men, one of the men show up, and it's a young kid, and they turn around, and they face the audience, and they face they they face the dancers. Then they face the audience, and all of a sudden they're old. They're an old person, and then more group of men walk up, being young, 
and they turn around and they to facing the women and they turn up front and before you know it they're teenagers and then they turn around they turn up front and before you know it they're old they're elderly and then they walk back down and all of a sudden the women show up uh, up stage and then they and they show they show them at their regular age they turn around look at the men look at the audience and they're teenagers and then before you know it they do the same thing they're older women and it ends with with a, a form of a boogie woogie a boogie woogie dance team in which it seems like the like the emphasis is the men are trying to ask the women to dance with them it looks like but they don't want to dance or it looks that way. And um, in a subway sequence of the monorails, you have this woman coming in with uh, long curly hair covering up her face. And uh, she's, wearing, she's wearing a nice white medium dress. And she's carrying this pillow. And she's walking like Frankenstein, making a lot of groans playing with a pillow and then you look in the back and you notice that one of the dancers are dressed up as a rabbit. I think it's supposed to be humorous and she makes groans, he walks like Frankenstein, sits on the on the seat and sits on the pillow and then relaxes and moves her hair up to show her face. Now part of the uh, disc includes deleted sequences and when you if you decide to get it that's up to you Boy, did they use a lot of dance numbers that were eventually edited. Edited. In the making of it, they have the making of it as deleted sequences too, and they added extras. And uh, like, for example, you have that one, Andre, I think, no, 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 it was a French guy, blonde guy. Uh, he's on this, 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 this chair, this, this, this dresser, trap of a dresser drawer, with a flesh color uh, bathing suit at the bottom, he's just making strange little movements. And the origins of Cafe Mueller when it was shot was when the lights were out were dark. Now obviously the Wim Wenders felt that that would be badly affected, that, that would be very bad thing starting that which originally uh, Pina danced that number. And uh, in the deleted sequences, for example, uh, it, you also had these dancers saying lines. Yes, saying lines. For example, um, you had these dancers, they weren't moving around, they were listening to one of the dancers singing a uh, ancient 12th century song. I think it was a 12th century song, and then they show the dancer singing. But boy, this movie had a lot of dance things that had to be edited out. And it was shot in a strange camera. The camera was on top of each other. Um, if 3D archives are looking at this, they were on top of each other. And, and then there was a reflection, a reflector in the middle, like they're pointing the lens, and there were huge heavy cameras. Now, this is one thing I didn't like about, and you're going to see it. Watch this. Ta-da! Look. See? These things are loose. And when you put, if you put these things together, they're loose. See this, see this how it fell out? It's loose. Watch this. No, it's okay. But every time you, you slide it out, this is, it's loose. They should have made it tighter. And guess what? This DVD version, which I checked a little bit, it still worked as far as conditioning, was scratched up like hell. I don't know if you can see it. It's scratched up. It is terribly scratched up, but because the Blu-ray uh, flat and 2D versions were in good shape, this wouldn't have been worth spending all the money to, to, to send it back just to get the DVD copy, but this was so terribly scratched up. But if, you're, if you got a copy you're concerned about it, 
get a replacement if it has scratched up like mine. Secondly, they didn't include anaglyphic versions, but this was released in 2012 and 13, and most of your 3D TV sets and 3D players are popular, so there's no need for anaglyphic uh, like here. Um, uh, another thing, Wim Wenders, is, as I am speaking right now, has... Uh, is making a new 3D documentary with a digital camera, and it's about a painter named Anselm. And I don't know when I'm going to be putting on this show on YouTube, but it's going to be out in February, the American version. So you don't have to order it in Europe. But uh, this movie is what... 3D was all about, and he his focus on using 3D was to get the audience to become more intimate, to be more intimate with the the dancers, to as I kept saying a lot of times in defense of 3D to simulate a live performance. So, if you like this video, please comment or like or don't like criticize or condemn anything um or enjoy it bye